Look at it so very easy. My name is Laura and today let's make a very quick and easy quilt, but let's make it look complicated. No half square triangles, no set in squares, all straight seams. And we're going to use a bundle of fat quarters and one yard of a solid fabric. And I'm going to start with this great bundle of fat quarters from Dear Stella. It has these great little X's on it. Now there are eight fat quarters in this bundle, so you can use eight or you can even use nine fat quarters. You're also going to need one yard of a solid color. Now I've chosen this white and it's hard to see but it comes with these little scratch marks in it, which is going to kind of duplicate that same X in the fabric. The only thing additional we're going to need is a fabric for the backing and the binding. So out of four of the fat quarters, you're going to cut units that are 10 inches long by two inches and you will need nine of each. In the other four fat quarters, you're going to cut them 10 inches long but by two and a half inches. And again, you're going to need nine of each color. Also, we'll need nine of these long pieces. They're 10 inches by three and a half inches. So if you wanted to do all different ones, you can, or you can leave them all the same color. And out of another fat quarter, you can cut nine three and a half inch squares. Now I was able to get it from one of the other fat quarters, so I only used eight fat quarters total and one yard of white. And the fat quarters are really easy to cut. From each fat quarter, you're going to need to get nine long strips. This is a great way of doing it. So square off your fabric, and these are going to be 10 inches each. And in this case, they're two and a half inches. So I'm able to get two, four, six, eight, and nine. So this is going to be left over. So I'm going to need four fat quarters that are cut at 10 inches by two and a half inches. And I'm going to need four fat quarters cut the same way, but instead of the two and a half inches, they're going to be two inches. So you're going to cut it the same way and you're going to have that leftover fabric. And this is all you're going to need to make the blocks. Now we need to sew the blocks together. Put the squares aside. And each of these are going to be sewn together in units. So I'm going to have the three here sewn together, these three are going to go together, and those three are going to go together. I'm going to bring this whole pile to the machine and I'm going to sew those three units together with a scant quarter inch. I now have nine of these units put together. For pressing, well, the pressing is going to be all up to you. You can press the seams going out, you can press them to one side, you can press them to the other, you can even press them open. However you want to press is up to you. I would just keep them all the same. So I'm going to press these units together and I'm going to get the rest of the units all sewn. So each of these pieces are now 10 inches by seven inches. We now have nine of each of these units. We're going to need four units to make one block and to put them together, they're going to be really easy. We'll lay them out first. So you're going to have the center block and that short side is always going to remain on the outside of the block. So the first block, the one edge is going to go straight with the block edge with that skinny side out. The next block, we have the skinny side out and it's going to fit here. Skinny side out, it's going to fit up there skinny side out, it's going to fit there. So with having nine of each of these, we now are going to have nine blocks that look exactly the same. Now there are other variations of this. If you like, you can do each of these strips the same color, so each of those four pieces will be identical. Or you can take all the skinny sides and put them inside. I want all of my blocks to look the same. So I'm going to lay it out and make sure all of my piles are the same. Now we get to sew them together. Choose one side to work together and just pull the other three out of the way. 
this little three and a half inch square needs to go on the corner. And what we need to do is do a partial seam. Take one of the three inch blocks, match up the top and the side. You're going to stitch down to about an inch. So you're going to have a little flap opening there. And you don't need to measure it. You just need to sew some of the top and leave some of the bottom. It's better if you leave a bigger space along the bottom. It'll just be easier to handle. And that is how that first block is going to be sewn on. And I'm going to do all of this block first. So all of those nine squares are sewn on and each one of them have that little piece that has not been stitched on. Now we can place this back in the pile and put the pieces together. By putting the pieces back together, it's going to be simple for you to see the order that you're going to go in. So this was the center square, and from there, that's how the pieces are going to go together. The next seam is going to be the seam along that area there. This long seam is going to match right along that edge. You're going to be able to take that, flip it, match up that seam and stitch it. As you sew those two seams together, take that little block and stitch the seam down on top of that long piece. So I have that quarter inch seam and when I open it up, I still have that little flap open. But the edges will match up. If we put this block back together, the next one is going to be the edge which matches. This one will not go because that edge is not matching and you're going around. So this will be the next block to go on. So match up those edges and stitch them down. And as you stitch, this last seam can go onto itself so that this block is going to lie flat and you won't have to force it against those edges. And with that seam done, when you open it up, you can see that edge is still matching. You still have your little point. Now the next block is going to go right along that edge, but we want to move this piece out of the way. And that's why we were able to do a partial or a part seam. So just take this block and fold it out of the way. Now you can see that seam is going to match up there. I like to just put a pin to hold that little flap out of the way. Match the edges up and stitch. And as you stitch a quarter inch, you're going to be able to take that last seam allowance and fold it onto that long piece. The seam here has been stitched down and it matched. Now we can take that pin out and fold back that first flap. Right here is that first partial seam that we stitched. We need to finish sewing that part seam. We're going to be able to finish sewing it right there, so if we just take that and fold it in half, and that edge is going to match up right to the bottom. If you turn it, you are going to be able to stitch it from this side here so that you can stitch that flap down on that long piece again. There's that partial seam. Now I'm going to finish that seam right down. And when you open it up, that was the partial seam, and the seam is stitched. Your block is done. I now take it to the iron and press those seams down, and those seams are going to go in a circular shape. We now have nine identical blocks. Now if your machine has gone a little wonky and the blocks are not all the same size, because they should be about 16 and a half inches, you can square them down. Find your center mark, and trim the squares. Once you have all your squares the same size, we get to sew them together. They're going to be sewn together in groups of three, so you're going to have three blocks and three rows. So just take up your blocks and sew them together. And you will see here that the seams don't match, so there are no seams to match at all. So do three rows of three, then we're going to sew those three together, keeping your blocks going all in the same direction. When all the blocks are sewn together, the pattern looks like it's weaving in and out amongst all of the other pieces. 
And when you stand back, you can really see how that fabric looks like it's weaving back and forth. It is not a complicated block. It only looks complicated partly because of the partial seams that you put in part of the quilt. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.